You are now listening to For All Nerds Show, a podcast about geek and pop culture from the perspective of people of color. For All Nerds is hosted by DJ Ben Amin and Tatiana Keene Jones. For All Nerds Show is a member of the Loudspeakers Network, where we always say rest in peace to our founder, Combat Jack. For All Nerds Show is powered by our listeners. Everything we do from our podcasts, live events, our website are all independently funded. Please continue to support us through our Patreon page at patreon.com slash for all nerds. Welcome to the Fan Bros, the show where the bros are fans. Doodle. And what's up, y'all? And welcome to another episode of the For All Nerds Show. Ah, the voice of the urban geek where we discuss geek culture from the perspective of people of color. And as always, it's your boy, DJ Ben. I mean, I am hung over as hell right now. <laughs> so, um, a.k.a. I'm, you know, I shouldn't have been drinking last night. That's all I got right now. <laughs> I'm going to go right to my co-host. Yes, Tatiana King, the Grand Duchess of Tech, also known as Lambo Calrissian, Flex, mm-hmm. Luthor, T'Challa Bread, Tatiana mm-hmm. Kang, the Conqueror, and the Ting of the North. There you go. There you go. Uh, I'll just say toss a coin to your ninja. All right, I'm going to add in AKAs as we go there along. Go. And oof, yeah, quite appropriately tonight, <laughs> or today, whenever you're listening to this, we have some very special guests in the house. Please introduce yourselves, but let me introduce y'all before that. We do have Brandon Collins and Gordon Baker Bone of Drunk Black History. And that's what I mean by saying how appropriate this is. Just the boy's done it. How y'all Down doing? Back. Thank you so much for having us. I mean, we're going to be feeling like you, Ben, in uh, two weeks after the show. So I, I got you. Okay, well, yeah, that's what we're here to discuss is this sh- upcoming show and a bunch of other things, so we'll get to that. But, yeah, uh, two weeks from now is fine. You know, you're not feeling like this right now, <laughs> which is the big difference here. Um, so, yeah, it's been a while since we've been here and for all nerds, mm-hmm. family, shout out to everybody listening. I know y'all happy we back. We do have, you know, our very special guest, very big show for everyone today. Uh, how y'all feeling, though? You know, How you doing, Tatiana? I'm doing fine. Like, I'm happy to see you guys here, Gordon and Brandon. Um, I'm remembering the last time, like, I was on Drunk Black History, uh, mm-hmm. a few Juneteenths back, you yes. know. Really, the early days, yeah. In the early days. Pre pandemic. Um, oh, shit. You were yeah, there. Yeah, it was pre pandemic. Yeah, before it got even. I've been on Drunk Black History. Shit. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. 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 Pre pandemic yeah, for you, too, with Steve oh. Harvey. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, your Harvey? person was Steve Harvey. No, no, no. Uh, oh. He came on for a family feud, but my friend oh. Justin uh, from Media and Popcorn, shout out to Media and Popcorn. Yeah. He uh, had a Steve Harvey outfit and he does Steve Harvey impressions. Wow. And he hosted it. was so crazy. It was one yeah. of the best events. Yeah. yeah. Well, like Ben said, we're going to get into things, but I just want people to know more about what drunk black history is because for those who haven't been to the show or heard about it, can you give them some information? Ooh, uh, drunk black history is a uh, critical race theory disguised for people that don't normally get critical race theory. Mm-hmm. It's the it's the best show, in my opinion, to teach you about black history and history in general uh, through the guise of being drunk. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Excellent. I like that. Um, and. Like, what are we going to expect with this? What's the next Drunk Black History show? The next said? one's on Thursday, February 23rd at the Bell House in Brooklyn. Uh, okay. Doors open at 7, showtime's at 8. We are live streaming it for folks that are not in New York. Um, tickets can be bought at DrunkBlackHistory.com. And we have a dope roster of comedians and actors. We got Kevin Iso, who's on uh, Showtime's Flatbush Misdemeanors. We got J.D. Williams, who was Bodie from The Wire. Mm-hmm. Oh, Electra. our peoples. Mm-hmm. Yep, He's yep, on our family. Yeah. Yep, yep. Electra Telsford, who uh, was a woman at Comedy Festival. And then a uh, stand-up comedian performing, Simeon Goodson. So we got a lot of fun stuff. And music's provided by our homie, uh, Shaq uh, Stanley. So, Shaq, Shaq. yeah, we got we got yeah. a huge show plan. Uh, yeah. special, special guest appearance by Fall Nerds. That, that's what I'm hearing. Well, uh, I mean, if y'all want to come through, come through. Let uh, us know. He said you can sit in the front. 
<laughs> he's like, he can't he be on stage. He didn't even say you could sit in the front. <laughs> like, don't get it twisted. He was in the back. Yeah, he was like, you know, you all can, y'all can buy a ticket. <laughs> well, to be fair, tickets are going fast, but we'll put you on the list. But you might, you know, you might not get a seat. I mean, I can't. Wow. I, mean, I can't promise. A seat. <laughs> yeah, we, we have mixed seating. We have mixed seating. Stand in and seating. You know what I mean? Wow. It's all good. No. No it, it, no, it really is. A good, I, I, I like the way you described it, Gordon, because um, I, I spoke about Mae Jemison on mine. And like mm-hmm. you said, like, like people actually, and I know uh, quite a bit about her and like, it was all jokes and ha ha, he, he laugh, but it was actually very informative as well. And, you know, I felt like a lot of the, the young men that were there, like really understood and were learning something. So um, I, you know, I had a blast. And I know Dolce Sloan was there, Don Will, a few mm-hmm. other people. So it was, it was a lot of fun. It's a, it's amazing how many people uh, say things to us after the show and let us know things that they learned from the show. Because, like, me and Brandon, we have, we're just having a good time. Me, Brandon shows up with, uh, with so much booze, and, mm-hmm. like, we discussed this before we even get to the show. And we, like, it's stuff that we already know. And by the time we get to the end of the show, when people go, I never knew this stuff, it always blows my mind. I don't know about you, Brandon. What do you, how do you feel? I mean, I, I always appreciate it because I'm learning too at, at times, you know, I do the research and stuff, but like I grew up in Ann Arbor. They didn't really teach us old black history. You know, even February, they would play, they would play parts of Malcolm X and maybe like the adventures of Huckleberry Finn with Elijah <laughs> Wood and be like, this is, this is what slavery was like, y'all. So uh, the show is always a great opportunity. Wait, to learn so- <laughs> wait, wait, yeah, bro. I did not wait. Hold on, I, no, I I get that part. I mean, I understand, but I didn't even know Elijah Wood was in <laughs> the Adventures of Huckleberry Finn. That's that's the part. Does he say the N word? Oh, wow. uh, no, but a lot of other people do. A lot of other people do. I mean, doesn't Huck Finn in, in the book say it? I think he does in the book. Yeah. All the niggas say nigga. This is like an early '90s Disney movie, which still doesn't mean nothing because the Disney was wild in the '90s. But Sorry. yeah, it's like if. It, the, they would play stuff like that to make it palatable for young people. And then we read Roll with Thunder, Hear My Cry. That'd be like the February. <laughs> the motherfucking the Hobbit. <laughs> the <laughs> Hobbit, yes. Yeah. Black yeah. History Month. <laughs> yep. And then occasionally yeah. you hear a uh, Purple Rain. <laughs> what the fuck does that have to do with Black History? <laughs> so they only play you the black, best black musician ever. Really? So that's why I appreciate the show, because I learned too a lot. And then I represent I feel like I represent a lot of the audience that like is maybe embarrassed to admit that they don't know stuff about black history. So like, for instance, we talked about Divine Nine and I like, you know, I'm making I'm making jokes to try to make it like give examples of what it is. Mm-hmm. So I was like, oh, yeah, like the house, the house is in Hogwarts. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, Gordon's like, what? But then like some people were like, thank you, because I was kind of like trying to understand what it was. And so like, you know, after I have audience members that say, yo, thank you for like being a little goofy because it made me like kind of relax a little bit about not feeling so guilty mm. about not knowing our history. And so that's like the kind of responses I get. I've gotten so much trouble. It's like my mom's a Delta. Yeah. My godmother's a Delta. My sister's a Delta. <laughs> and then he called it Hogwarts and they all looking at me like, Did he like are you serious? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, listen, it's, I, I, you know, at the end of the day, you know, like you, it's all love and, you know a lot about it and 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 technically you are doing this with respect like it's just you're just doing it in a way that's accessible to a lot of other people like and i, I mentioned i'm un- melanated but even the melanated who may not know like especially stuff like divine nine like unless you grew up in it you had no idea what that was like before you know what i mean so like i you know i appreciate that approach oh yeah oh. and it's always dope like because you know we always try to do like different um things with each show so every show is like a different experience and like we even started doing like a Halloween themed one. And that's kind of really where the drinking comes into play, because when you talk about horror stories in our history, that's that's tough to, to get through. So you need a little extra, you know, libation to, to, to kind of yeah. smooth it over a little bit. Right. But we, we've had some fun. Like uh, we we did. Um, I think it was our first Halloween show after the pandemic. We did a Candyman bit. Yep. Where we, I was going to offer up to one hundred dollars for somebody to say Candyman five times in the mirror. This broke brother. Raise his hand for five. Oh, fool. Why you gotta call him broke? He just wants to. No, because he is. Damn you sure have is. to be to say that. Damn sure is. I Ain't would never no do it. Eight. Five dollars. No. Five? I thought you said 500. I don't know where I thought 500. Yeah. Yeah. Five Washington. <laughs> Fam, I remember as a kid Hell when no. I saw that shit, I came home and I think I got to three. 
And then I was like, yeah, no, nah, I'm good. You know, like, what am I thinking? You know? Like, <laughs> no, thank thinking? you. Ain't no way. Ain't no way. <laughs> I sent that clip from the Drop Like History show to some folks at Monkey Paul, who I met, who I met since I've been out here. Yeah. And uh, they were like, someone did that for $5. <laughs> I was like, I know. It's, oh, yeah. New York is a wild place. Yep, bro. Gotta get home. <sighs> My nigga, no. Absolutely not. <laughs> uh, all right. So, Ben, I mean, we have a lot to talk about today. Yes, we do. We do have a lot to talk about. You know, this is, we are recording this on the day before, or two days before the Super Bowl. You know, Super Bowl Sunday weekend, all that's popping. And there's been a lot, obviously, <laughs> with that. Day. What? <laughs> oh. Right. You're so drunk. <laughs> Look, I already... You had I a lot of Alize last night. I mean, this whole this whole cruise messed up. Uh, Gordon Bullet. calling me Taina. Bullet straight. Then I mean, not you know here. He don't know what fucking day of the week it is. Only honestly, only Brandon seems to be cognizant. I think. Straight up whiskey, baby. I was oh man, like that shit was yo. You know it. That's oh I'm always a whiskey night. There's never you know if there's a drink in my hand, it is a whiskey. You know like. Can I ask you just one question? Uh, yeah. Black man and black man. When you're drinking whiskey, what type of tipper are you? I'm, a, I'm I, because I'm a, you know, I've worked as a DJ all my life. I'm a, you know, twenty percent, twenty five percent, you know. Ooh. Oh, this, yeah, I'm I heavy. Like that. Yeah, I'm heavy, bro. Yeah, every time. Black guy yeah. tips, word around. Yeah, straight up. I mean, I've, you know, I'm, I'm a DJ. You know, I've, I've worked in the service industry since I was like fifteen years old. So it's like, you know, I don't, yeah, I'm I appreciate always that, man. heavy. I love that. Yeah, my uh, DoorDash this morning, twenty percent. I don't, I don't play around. Yeah. yeah, like, you know. They took like, half of it, but at least you tipped it well. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't want to say it. it. I didn't I want to say it. They take most of it? I thought they get all their tips. Uh, nah. They claimed that they fixed it after that New York Times article, but, yeah. you know, they're still taking it. Oh, well, I got Postmates, so they better? I don't know, you know. But they all janky. Yeah, they got a zero dollar delivery free. That's all I know. <laughs> so every time a business, every time like a local restaurant gets a Uber Eats order, they be shivering in their boots. They like, oh <laughs> shit, we about to take a hit on this quesadilla. Shivering in their boots. Who are you? <laughs> yeah. I was just, I was trying to let it go, but you know, <laughs> he said, "Shiver me timbers." What's happening in DC? All DC right. <laughs> Trying to stay on point right here, yes. Yeah. And because we have not, you know, come together, coalesced on the For All Nerd show since the big announcement from James Gunn. Mm -hmm. That was January 31st. The man promised that he would make an announcement in January and waited to the last day to make the <laughs> announcement, which I love it. You know, you got to love it. Like, that's that's gangster, as Sean would say. Has, has anyone noticed that James looks like Guy Fieri now? Like, he's slowly getting closer to looking like the man. You know what? I was just um, also watching that Jay-Z video. What's it? Burn, 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 where he's uh, performing in the uh, museum. And, oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. With that, yeah, with that woman, yeah. Ooh, with the and, white ooh. woman that comes up to him and put her in her head. Yo, watching that now <laughs> is way different. I mean, I hated it then. Critical race But watching right it there. now is like, yo. Was, was that I, the moment? That yeah. was MoMA. That was MoMA. It's, it's terrible watching it now. Yeah. It's so bad. It's like one of the worst things you ever see. It's like, I mean, and it's all these white people being like, oh my God, Jay. And it's like, it, it's, and then she is just devilish even in that video. So, but back on point, Jim. Picasso baby, right? Picasso, Picasso baby. baby. Yep. Yes. Uh, Jim Jarmusch, the filmmaker, also looks exactly like James Jordan as I'm looking at this picture and I watched that video because hmm. Jim Jarmusch was in that. But back on point again to James Gunn. <laughs> Had to we quickly slander Jay for a second. <laughs> um, <laughs> he announced the new DC slate. And first off, a lot of people were quite upset, obviously, because, you know, that was the pretty much end of the idea of the Snyderverse and all that came with it. Get the as fuck we over know, it. There will be no more Henry Cavill. Uh, as far as The Flash coming out this year, we're not really sure which Batman is going to be in it yet. Like, we know that there's going to be a Batman because we, um, I mean, let's get to that first, right? Because that is, that's pretty much the only thing that seems to still matter. As James has now said, The Flash is one of the best superhero movies ever made. And it will reset Cap. the DC universe. Cap. <laughs> Cap. Like, 
cap. Like I, I don't know if it's saving face or what. And else, I, I don't read that quote understand. yesterday. And I was like, word. I, <laughs> I don't understand. Like you and I talked about this a lot, Ben. I mean, if months ago, a year ago, but like. Flashpoint isn't the only way to reset shit. There's so many nah. other fucking avenues and stories and things that you can utilize from the comics to be able to reset the universe. Like, we knew yeah. DCEU was in shambles. It was fucking, you know, down bad for years. You can fucking do anything. Like, i.e., cancel everything like you fucking did coming into it. Y'all canceled movies that were done and left this one movie with this nigga that who the fuck knows everything he did, but has so much controversy behind him to turn around and say, this is the best goddamn movie. What? That's what upset me most about this announcement was um, Peter, was it Saffron, the dude who's running it with James Gunn? Yeah. He came out and said, Batgirl was unwatchable. Like there's, the, he, in the <laughs> same meeting, he was like, Batgirl is so unwatchable. It would have been detrimental to everything that we're trying to do and what WB was trying to do to salvage this. And then to say, well, Ezra's putting it in the time and really they're they're really working on the rehabilitation. So I'm like, oh, they're keeping him. That's what that's what they're saying is that they're keeping them in this DCU new roadmap. They just don't want to right. say it publicly because they don't want that smoke before the movie comes out. Right. And they're hoping people will love the movie enough or enough people will see the movie. That's undeniable hits that are like, hey, we're going to continue with this iteration of The Flash. So they made James Gunn say it then? <laughs> like, I don't want to say it, but James going to say it. He's clapping back. I think he's going to lose his mind because the way that he's responding to people on Twitter, that's not sustainable. If you're trying to run a studio direct, right? Like, it's just, that's crazy that he's doing that. I, um, yeah, I, I don't, you know, I don't, I don't get it. Like that, that is really wild, especially about that bad girl stuff, because the directors of that are like really reputable directors. They're also directors of color. And, that's, you know, that's crazy disrespectful to say something about, you know, somebody's work who put all that time into it. And then to, like you said, turn around and be like, but Ezra's cool. Right. Like, it's, it's some bullshit. And, like, I've also heard that that's not true. Like, it's a lot of shit that's just cap across the board. Like, mm -hmm. they said in testing, it was actually testing well. So, which one is it, you know? Like, yep. Uchima is a one mic. Like, I just don't understand, like, how you can come out your face and say these this things and like just do this like catastrophic movement across this late and then turn around and say as you said Ben oh but Ezra's good so good luck to y'all whatever the fuck I'm not watching that movie like I don't fucking care and, and 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 secondly why would I care about this one remaining piece from the 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 remnants of of the previous of the DCEU when I'm looking forward to the DCU who the fuck cares I never fuck and that's another thing I never fucking like this guy period Okay. Me either. I never liked them, period. And I never liked them as the Flash, period. This like, guy I just is never tough. saw it. I never saw it for them. Yeah, I guess that is ginger. Well, I think Zack Snyder barely saw it for them. They, they didn't even audition. Didn't he call them on, like, they were on a vacation or something? It's like, hey, you want to be the Flash? So then he did see it for them. Like, he was already, like, you know, he was just chosen without, yeah. But, they, then, they, but then they, that's the yeah, only sorry. person that gets away with it like you can't keep getting away with this like are you serious like well, that's the only person who continues on like I, this whole thing is, is fucked when it comes to the flash to me so i'm just ready for them to just get rid of it and just keep it pushing that's all what else all right. i mean well speaking of keeping it pushing um they <laughs> uh james john did announce the slate for what will come next after that and first up uh which will be before he did say the superman movie that we'll talk about is going to be the big like launch of the dcu but before that we have creature commandos a seven episode animated series written by gun that's already in production and it's got a team of like the classic monsters from the dc comics actually there was a really ill uh grant morrison comic where they featured the frankenstein that's going to be in this creature commandos and james gunn is you know he's a pretty good writer and everything i like uh Peace Peacemaker, maker. yeah, I like Peacemaker well yeah. enough, and so you know this could be cool. I, I don't really, you know, beyond that, yeah, whatever. I mean, yeah. I on some other things on the slates. I was looking forward. I'm looking forward to Waller. I'm looking forward mm -hmm. to the Themyscira story. I I forgot the actual name of it, but the name the the story that's set in Themyscira with the Amazons. Um, because I personally want one guiding light out of this whole Wonder Woman mess. Paradise Lost. Paradise Lost. Thank you. The one thing that I actually liked out of the whole Wonder Woman thing that we were we received was 
the, the, the world of Themyscira because I've always, every movie, I was like, damn, could we just spend the entire movie here? Like, every time you were there when you saw, like, them going through the trials and, and you know, just even just living, I just wanted to see more of that. So I'm really happy to see a show about that. Um, I'm also looking forward to the Green Lantern show. Um, they said it was kind of like a true detective, something else crossover. Mm-hmm. Um, I you know, and and it's supposed to it's supposed to feature John Stewart and um the other Hal guy. Jordan. Yeah, Hal Jordan. Yeah. The other guy. <laughs> the other guy. Because I want l- listen, I seen Hal Jordan, so I'm like, let's see more yeah. John Stewart. So, but um, but yeah, like I I there is things that sound interesting to this slate, and I just feel like yo, if you're gonna be new, be new, and like it's get just completely clean yourself off, you know, the bullshit. So, it is what it is. Anything else you oh. guys are looking forward to? Is yeah. Blue Beetle is Blue Beetle gonna be part of the DCU? Is that going to be part of this? If it makes a lot of money. Okay. He was all hype about it. James hyped it. J- James hyped it when he, in his, um, in his. Start out, his, Hispanic <laughs> cast. You could be like, baby. Yeah, I mean, let's keep it, let's keep it a butt, bro. If that shit goes out and makes a billion dollars, it damn sure will be. If yeah. it don't. He seems to have a lot of faith in it, James. <laughs> I love the actor. He was great in, um, Cobra Kai. So okay. I'm looking forward to it. And the Blue Beetle character that they're doing is super dope. Super dope character with a whole dope ass um backstory and like everything around him is fire. They he was heavily featured on Young Justice. And yeah, so people who've seen Young Justice will know that Blue Beetle. And he's a very he's a very dope character. He's kinda like Iron Man mixed with Spawn. He has mm-hmm. like his powers come from a stare that is some alien that attaches to his back. So that forms his, and it attaches to the back, and so they have a symbiotic relationship, kind mm. of a Venom-type thing, mm. and it forms the armor, which is like this whole Iron Man-type thing that can form all kind of weapons, and it's fire. He's yeah. not a bad character to play in Injustice. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure he whoops ass in that, yeah, because he is ill. Blue Beetle is dope. And so I'd like, I'm hoping... But uh, what about anything from this uh, DCU that's been announced that y'all are looking forward to? I mean, I'm looking forward to seeing Damien just because, but I don't know if they're going to go with Kid Damien just because I. Oh my really God, like, yes. Uh, yeah. I really like Batman versus uh, Robin just because that was like really gritty, really violent. And I'm like, oh, they're not going to do that though. They're not going to have the balls to go that dark. Well, they, they said it's based on the Grant Morrison run. So then it happened. You know, yeah, and that's Kid Damien. That's like, you know, when, when uh, especially when even Dick Grayson becomes Batman for a while i love it more curious yeah. about who's going to be batman in that because i think that that's going to mm-hmm. really dep- like you know help me determine like my excitement for it who should be damien no, no well that too like yeah that's because i wonder what one. age they're going to go with mm-hmm. you know that's the thing too so it's like i'm just curious like how it's going to work out i'm 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 not even optimistic i'm not even cautiously optimistic i'm just going to wait and see because i know the Superman, I would love to see a great Superman movie. I didn't have the biggest problems with Man of Steel, but there, I mean, there were a lot of issues with it, but I was like, this is fine compared to what we got with Brian Singer. Um, but I really, I really like what's going on with the Michael B. Jordan one. Like what's why are no one talking about that one? Ta-Nehisi. Ta-Nehisi's, they said that still maybe. Really? Um, it's still a maybe? Maybe. Mm. Mm. Well, you, you over there looking like I see the strunch face. What's going on? Over here? <laughs> yeah. This is the most DC I've heard in quite a while. <laughs> um, I'm not a big DC guy. The only thing DC that I get behind is uh, my favorite comic book series was uh, Batman versus Predator, and that's it. Oh, and, like that. <laughs> that's random. <laughs> that is fucking random. Why I didn't like the no, no I don't I don't I don't know if I've ever read that one. Archie versus Predator is actually one of my favorites though. That dog that man goes through the whole Riverdale with no problem. <laughs> he murders all of them cats. <laughs> it's hilarious. He might be OP as hell, knocking jug he runs, out of head. He, he runs straight through Riverdale, dog. <laughs> Someone so we need to get, set those kids straight. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, Riverdale down a peg. That was it. Was it was more than a peg, boy? It was like <laughs> a, a whole generation of kids it's just, just so, got wiped out. But um, it's just so random. Uh, all right. Well, out of everything, let me see that I'm. All right. Th- this is the funny thing. A lot of this stuff I'm actually really looking forward to. Like this, is the most I've been hyped for DC in a long time because Same. it features Same. a lot of stuff that I love. Like. 
Booster Gold is one of my favorite characters oh, yeah. of all time. You say if that you, a lot. You can go look up the Justice League Unlimited episode featuring Booster Gold and just watch that one episode. That's all yeah. you got to do. That's the nigga that's a fraud YouTube. in his time. And he goes back in yes. time to be a, a superstar or whatever. Yes. Okay. And he takes technology from the future to become a superhero in the past. Okay. And he's... To get some just, clout. Watch that the episode time. of Justice League Unlimited. It might even be on YouTube. It is just classic some of the best writing it's hilarious um when they announced the supergirl book by tom king i hadn't read it yet but i went and read it and that was another dope thing about this how people have been inspired to go read all these different runs of comics and stuff and they've been selling out everywhere i read the supergirl woman of tomorrow because i love tom king and tom king it's pretty damn good like i you know i wasn't like you know, it's not his best work, but it's it's a really good Supergirl story, and it really gets to the heart of why. Um, I don't, I don't like how Dunn described it though. How he described her is she's much more hardcore, not the Supergirl we're used right. to. Is because it, that's not the book. Writing like, wise, is yeah. it on the level of the Vision series that Tom no. did? Hell no! I okay. mean, come on, that's not one of his best things ever. This okay. is, but it, but I like. I've been on and off Tom King as of late, but I recently read his Human Target series, which has one more issue. Which is god damn it. You know, it's like, God damn it, how you know, this motherfucker here can write a goddamn <laughs> comic book. And the supergirl's like, you know, god damn it, this motherfucker here at, you know, there's little parts of it where I was like, eh, but overall it's super good. And I think it's it's not hardcore supergirl. It's really the essence of why I love Superman and, you know, the, the Kryptonians. Yeah. yeah, because they're all about hope and about goodness and it captures that in a very hardcore story. I see. Is what I'll say. Yeah. I see. And so that's why I'm hyped for that. The Authority is another joint that I've always loved. It's a classic uh, from the 90s um, comic by Warren Ellis. You can look that up. It's like, it was kind of like a take on the Justice League. Like there's a Batman analog and a Superman analog, but they're in love with each other and they're, <laughs> they're you know, a gay um, lovers uh, couple. And then it's got some other super ill characters, but they're all super high powered. And the authority was always like the team who was like, they don't take no shit. They mm. come in and get shit done. You know, they're not about like how the Justice League gets it. They, you know, they get it done. They're kind of, they're grimy. So that's, those are the ones I think I'm most hyped for. There's uh, a Swamp Thing. Yeah. Yep. Swamp Thing. I saw that. What yeah. Swamp Thing. Uh, uh, and they say a horror film that promises to close out the first part of the first chapter. Okay, that of oh, so that mean that's the first part of the uh, like phase one of the DCU, whatever I guess. Which is Gods and Monsters. Gods uh, and Monsters. Yeah, this phase is Gods and Monsters. Yeah. Oh, that's dope. That's dope. That yeah. was from uh, another. Who is that? I can't remember who did that. Um, that run or whatever. What that story is from. From right, but, right. Yeah. No. Um. That's interesting because that, I've never finished that Swamp Thing series, but people always said it was really good, and this has nothing to do with it. So, Right. I mean, how anyway. do you guys feel about the aspect now of, for me, I was really happy just to see DC have a plan. DC has not had any semblance of a plan for a decade. So um, DC Cinematic Universe. So I just felt like the fact that essentially the kind of <laughs> Kevin Fahey adding, you know, putting a Kevin Feige approach to it where it's just like, hey, all the characters are going to be the same across TV, film, and animation, you know? it's going and, and James made a point to say that. He said the people that you see in live action are going to voice the characters you see in the animation, and then if there are stories that are not exactly connected, they're going to be firmly stamped as extended universe, you know? But everybody else, we're all together, one big family. So how do you guys feel about the fact that now they have a plan? I mean, the fact that they have a plan, I am confident because I don't think they could do a go with the public embarrassment of like having a falling out with James Gunn. Mm -hmm. um, it, and I, it, it, there's a little bit more like uh, organized than the last time they announced like Justice League Part One, Justice League Part Two and stuff. And um, the only the only thing is, like you said, Tatiana, like getting cast members and creatives to do video games, TV shows, movies, given everything that's happening with all three guilds right now. I'm like, good luck negotiating those contracts. That's yeah. the only thing I'm like, kind of like, I don't know what talent's going to sign up for pretty much a Samuel Jackson Marvel deal. Right. But that's also across multiple mediums because I don't mm -hmm. know if agents will be able to be like, all right, I know how to negotiate for a film deal, but now I consider TV, potentially animation, potentially video games, like all those things. That's a lot. That's a lot to try to get someone to commit to. But I'm, if they get good cast, like I'm going to be there. Like I love DC stuff. Like I'm, I'm a little different than Gordon. 
but um yeah but i'm just waiting and seeing right now right and, and what about you going i know you don't like you're not a dc guy but did I, this excite you it, it does excite me because uh it's the first time ever i realized dc has a plan uh they seem like they were just throwing <laughs> they were spitballing and like honestly i'm just waiting to see uh a better better films and better better products coming out of dc that's just the main thing yeah so, so hearing them have a plan just got me excited so because i'm down to see and get more from dc universe that's what's up yeah um don't i mean what you thinking about i'd really be hyped like because i was just thinking how i don't see a lot of like uh off the bat inclusion you know and it's like uh, i mean i got i guess we got waller and then we got uh john stewart right and the authority <laughs> is um i'm trying to think they got an asian they got one there's an asian character in the authority and that's uh, whatever you have to say they got uh yeah right, they got, think, uh. <laughs> i was i had to think about it I, don't... I think the fact that you have to think so hard is the problem I'm sure we got some in Paradise Lost. Uh, Booster Gold is white as hell. Um, you know, uh, Supergirl, as we know. So, But there we go. And that's what I was thinking about. I was like, what if in The Brave and the Bold with Batman and Damien, you know, there are people of color? Yeah, yep, that is the internet after what they did with Batgirl. Yeah, I don't know. The internet just banged their head through the wall right now. <laughs> that's what got so quiet. Did you hear that sound? <laughs> yeah, that that's the sound of a million Redditors screaming into yeah. the night. But I don't know, man. Like, you know, I'm just, I'm just, and I had said this to a few people, like, let's give them a chance, minus mm-hmm. the Flash. Let's give them a chance to show that, because I have no remorse for that. But minus that, let's give them a chance to actually make this happen and see where it goes. And I really do hope that they they come with a cohesive expression of DC characters. Like, it, it's about time. I think the reaction to the authority and the queer Batman and Superman analog is going to be you know, banging their head through the wall enough. So I can't wait for that. Cool. <laughs> yeah, I can't wait. Oh, my God. Because they are, like, uh, the Midnighter and I think it's Midnighter and Apollo. Yeah, the Midnighter and Apollo are two of my favorite characters. They, I, I love their relationship in the comics. So they're, like, ultra violent, but then they are just, like, super in love. So it's, like, you know, people like who think of... Like a regular relationship. <laughs> yeah, no, but people think of, like, you know, queer men is like you know whatever and these dudes ain't about that these dudes about that life you know they will lay it the smack if down and right right know, right right superman and batman is great like i love it um there's yep. a lot of trailers that drop as well yes because like we said we had a super bowl coming up so we do have some trailers and you know through the magic of technology right here we're gonna be able to watch them with our audience you know, live. We're going to do it live and all that. Fuck it, we're doing live. Live. So, uh, yeah, first up, we're, let's get to this little, um, it's a quick TV spot from Ant-Man coming up that okay. we will actually have a review for Tuesday. Yes. Uh, coming up. Yep. We're going to have, we'll be dropping that for everybody. So, Look forward to that. I'm looking forward to seeing Ant Man. I've heard, you know, good things so far. I'm looking um, forward to seeing Kang. Bro, yep. I mean, come on now. Thank you. That's yeah. all what people Thank want. You. I want to yep. see Kang mop the fucking floor with yes. Ant Man 50 times. Even though I love Paul Rudd, I love Ant Man, but my guy, it's Kang. Yeah. All right. So uh, let's all peep this right now. All right. all right. A lot has changed about my life. We literally saved the world. But right now, the only job I want is being a dad. Scott Lang, you want to get out of here? And I need to get out of here. Bring me what I want. What's that? You cannot trust him. I I don't care who this guy is. I just lost so much time. He's a monster who thinks he's a god. Everything you call a life, I will burn out of time. He's got Cassie. We'll stop him together. You think you can beat me? Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantumania, rated PG-13, in theaters February 17th. Get tickets now. Yeah, fire. Yeah. Absolutely fire. That got me more hyped than ever. (laughs) 
I do wish they kept that King line into this in this trail where he's like, "Oh, you're an Avenger. Have I killed you before?" Yeah, 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 yeah. Thanos never said anything that fucking hard, bro. (laughs) (laughs) Yo, that was crazy when he said that. He better say that in the movie, right? Because I I hate when Marvel Uh, has the coldest lines in the trailers and then they cut them from the movie. Agreed. Agreed. I really hope they had it there. Listen, I. I said it before, man. This is not he who remains. He who remains was the nice one. Remember, he, was a, <laughs> he told you though. He said, he "Listen, told you. there are he worse versions you. than me out there. This is probably the worst." Um, so <laughs> I, I doubt it though. Oh, oh, one of the worst. You don't even yeah, think because you is- know what? I'm. I don't think that this like as much as we all want Kang to win in this film. I don't think he does. I think he's this, not going to win. No, I think he no loses, more. and I don't think Ant Man dies as much as we've been, you know, thinking that happens. I think that. This brings on the Kang dynasty where you have the ones, you know, there's going to be multiple Kangs and, you know, this ain't the worst yet. There's got to be the one who starts murdering dudes off. <laughs> like Murdering you know. the ones that murder other Kangs. Yeah. And I mean, murdering Avengers, you know, yeah. you know, well, that, that too, like, but yeah. But that is the thing about this, right? And they've talked about this, like uh, when they introduced Thanos, when they finally did bring him in, that was the way to establish him as the big bad is the fact that he kills Loki off the bat. Right, and so that's why somebody got to die. Zero games. So what if he? The first seven minutes. Yeah. So who's he gonna kill? Wasp. I was care. Ooh. Do you care if he does? I mean, okay, bye. Before her, you know, before (laughs) what's her name's like her, you know, her right wingish type style. But I don't even know because I've loved, I've loved her since Lost, man. So I would care. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I never really, I mean, even though that, that right wing stuff that you mentioned from Evangeline, like I, I just left that outside of the yeah, MCU stuff. Too. I'm just saying that the character, I was like, okay, bye. Like, oh, no, I, I would, I would care. I love her. Care. Yeah. I love it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I love the wasp and I love, you know, I think it's because I love Evangeline that I would be like, nah, I'd care. Mm. But Hank, I was thinking Hank. I could think, I could see Hank, Michael Douglas being like, I made enough money. Doing yeah. this stuff. I'm good. <laughs> or Michelle Pfeiffer, like, they could both be like, yo, we're good. Like, we we made like a little money. Like, we're getting old. We don't need to do this no more. Like, yeah. I could see that. I could see them both taking a hard L. Yeah. 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 I mean, once Michael Douglas and Robert Redford were showing up in Avengers movies, I'm like, are they just like bored? Like, what, <laughs> what's happening? Robert Refrescher said he retired and then came back for Avengers money, boy. That Disney check, boy. Yeah. Like, ooh. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, but I'm I'm excited. Like, you know, I've seen everything I need to see in order to be hyped about oh, this. Oh, yeah. So we yeah. were hyped about this for a long time. Jesus, I didn't even. Yeah, I, I, I actually did not want to watch that, and I'm glad that it wasn't too much, but that really effing hyped me up right there. So, all right. Uh, next up, we have 65, which is Adam Driver's new joint. Uh, it's at, it's called 65, but it's because it takes place 65 million years ago, I guess. It's wow. about it's like they've, it's been described as like a lone wolf and cub style story with Adam Driver fighting dinosaurs. Fuck so it. this is it. yeah, this is a quick uh, trailer that will be on the Super Bowl tomorrow. All right, right? yeah. Exclusively in movie theaters, March 10th. Wait, this year? Molly, you in danger, girl. Wow. So for that Wait, to be what? this year with just now showing up, let's, like, let's, isn't it a little late? Let's, <laughs> run that again. let's run that again real quick. <laughs> that again. Yeah. Like, you're telling me in February it's coming in March? Okay, so they're, they're crash landing. Yeah. And they've discovered Earth. Oh, okay, so they're so aliens they're the, discovering they're Earth. Aliens. Yeah, okay. No, but they're it. humans. Yeah. Millions of years ago, humans came from Discovered space. Earth. Oh, okay. Earth. You know, found Jurassic Park. My man got the gap, though. Boy, I like that one. That, that was a great yeah. shot right there. Yeah. Yeah. Kylo Ren meets Jurassic Park. I'm here for it. <laughs> He's in that JC video, too. He's 
Really? Yes. In the castle, baby? Yes, dog. So many people are in that joint, and he's sitting there looking at Jay like, oh, my God, Jay. You know, it's like, <laughs> oh, my God. Jesus Jay. Christ. This, yeah, that, um, that video uh, is so embarrassing. G- Gordon, any first impressions about this? Or second? Like, uh, this is one of my, like, I've seen this trailer, I want to say, like, two or three times. Okay. Okay. And I think I've even seen, I think one that came out, like, two days ago, and I saw it, and I'm just like, oh, I'm on board. Mm-hmm. I, I, just, I need this. Uh, I'm not even an Adam Driver fan, but I'm just like, you know what? Give it to me. Give me, put it, mainline it. I want it. I want yeah. All of it. Yeah. Gun, yeah. Guns and dinosaurs? Who yeah. doesn't want that? That's facts. Brandon, what about you? I mean, uh, yeah, I, I like this idea. Like, I saw that the big trailer came out a few months ago um, that kind of like gave a little bit more about like the mission and stuff. Uh, I, I like Adam Driver. I know Gordon just said he doesn't care for him, but yeah. um, I also love dinosaurs. Mm-hmm. The only thing that's like turning me off a little bit is I think that little girl is from the, the recent Jurassic World movies. She is? And Ooh, I think she's she that is. little clone girl. And I hate that. I, that's when they ah, like, she I hate that character that. more than anything in the cinematic world of Jurassic Park. That's one of my least fa- like that's my la- least favorite character in the whole series. I mean the whole movie is a fail, so <laughs> I can't fault her for that, you know? Like even my man from uh Lupin was terrible in that joint. Like that whole movie just it- so but yeah. I'm just like, you know, Fallen King with having this little white girl destroy humanity cuz she wants to spread the dinosaurs. I was like, I I hate everything about Hell this. No. Oh, no. No. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But No, um, I'm I'll I'll watch this. This looks interesting. What about you, Ben? Yeah, I mean, I rewound it right there. I'm like, definitely yeah. interested. You know, Martin, you know, I'm good. You know, like, he did run it back. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, all right, let me let me see that shit. You know, men shooting dinosaurs. I'm down. Like, you know, I'm, you know, that's like, you know, I don't know. Like, you don't need much more for me. Like, yeah, as long as there's a lot of dinosaurs and a lot of shooting, I'm good for it. Yeah, and it did say writers from a quiet place, and Quiet Place is one of my favorite films. Like one of my favorite like kind of thriller type films yeah because i like and i and particularly that concept like i like using no noise or silence as a weapon and as a tool so i thought that's i I just think it's very clever and they kept getting more clever with each you know there's two but each iteration of the story so um seeing that those people are involved you know i'm wondering how they're going to incorporate that with dinosaurs right like we kind of to me we kind of seen it all to me with dinosaurs you don't really care for that last one brandon but you know jurassic park is still the that that's the one you look to when you look at dinosaur movies so i'm curious how they're gonna you know, there are classic tropes in these dinosaur films, but like, are they going to incorporate something new? So, listen, I met John Williams here uh, in LA, and I was what like, What the fuck? You're- he said it real casually. What the fuck, bro? It was crazy. I met him at the lot. We were walking down a hall that literally had at the end Jurassic Park, and I was like, bro. I would have shit myself. I was wow. like, your, your music is incredible. Like, that theme alone is just every time I hear it, <laughs> my childhood comes back. No, I mean, you really would have shit yourself. I, I like, I'm like okay, uh, I t- I told this story recently when I was uh first starting out as a DJ. I met DJ Premier, right? And I literally I walked into this record store in Houston uh, called Sound Waves. It's a uh, anyone from Houston knows Sound Waves on South Main Street. Premier used to actually work there, and uh, everyone there knew I loved Premier, you know. And so one day, one night, I come into the store and Premier is standing behind the counter, and my man who works there is like, "Yo, look over there." And I turn to the left and yell out the biggest, oh, shit, you have ever heard. So and you shit yourself, yeah. Yeah, for the <laughs> next two years until I graduated high school, every time I walked in the sound waves, every person who worked there would turn around and yell out, oh, oh shit. <laughs> like, yeah, so, no. John, and then John Williams, I mean, Star Wars, Jurassic Park. And the one that people don't know that it fucks me up is Catch Me If You Can. Like oh, yeah, that man yeah. is on a the music on that was, was level. Crazy. Yeah, and yeah. it's so different than his usual stuff. Mm-hmm. That, yeah, that, it's like, yes, yes. Oh my god, that yeah. yeah, I would I I wouldn't be able to I'd be you know, I'd be sitting there. It's like when I met Premier, I was like, and that track you did in this track, you know, just like <laughs> And then when you put the triangle yeah. here, like I, I would it. lose it, nigga. I, I would get it. Ah! <laughs> it burns back, nigga. 
ah, the do a little face, nigga, ah, ah, nigga, nigga, you so nice. <laughs> but in this story, then, I mean, it sounds like you controlled your bowels. So that's why I go back to Gordon's yeah, question. Like that. Are you going to shit yourself? <laughs> well, I said, oh, I, no, I, but I would do exactly what I just said. I would be sitting there like, oh, my God, dog. You know, and then this, you know, I, I would be, I, you know, oh, fuck, I wouldn't know what to do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Say, saying oh shit is way better than actually. Yeah. Oh, it definitely is. I'm, I'm thankful for that because, yeah, that then, then, you know, my, I could never go to that store again. You know, that would have been the last time <laughs> I ever came into Soundwaves. And my life probably would have been quite different. I think I might have given up DJing and everything. <laughs> what else we got, Ben? I mean, yes, now, now we got the one, baby. This is what I have been effing waiting for right here, y'all. The Fast 10 first trailer, which I is a three almost four minutes. Yeah, I did see this one. Okay, Lord have mercy. I'm so hyped. I have not seen this yet. Um. If y'all don't know, I am obsessed with these films. I think they are one of the greatest running franchises of all time. They are responsible for more inclusion than pretty much any other franchise ever. You could say that, yeah. The way that the writers managed to work in, like, damn near do time travel tricks to to bring Han back and things of that nature are just, like, impeccable. I could go on and on. The theme of family, they uh, someone else pointed this out recently. They show you more regions of the world. Like it's just like when Black Panther was in Haiti. Like they were in Brazil. They go here. They go there. They show you culture from all around the world. Like yeah, look, they were in Dubai last time, right? Well, two. Movies I mean, ago. fuck Dubai, but you know. Yeah. Yeah, fuck them, but you know. <laughs> yeah. Beyond that, they had a good run. Yeah. <laughs> Hit play, that's, then. That's personal. So, we'll, you know, we'll keep it moving. That's why I yeah. said it. <laughs> <laughs> I know you did. <laughs> oh, man. God damn it. Are you my co host? Ain't no love out here in these streets. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead, Ben. Let's play. I'm about to. I'm just so hype right now. All right, let's go. I know that this road has been. Very hard. And yet here you are, building this magnificent family. What's going on in that head of yours? Something little piece of it. He said, Dad, they're not afraid of anything. But I am. I'm afraid of losing someone I love. Dominic Toretto. You're about to learn all about fear. Boom. You built such a beautiful life, filled with love and family. I never got that chance. You stole that from me. My future. My family. And now. What? I'm going to Jason Momoa. Wait, 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 wait. No, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. They, so they Bro, straight you're up just do this every 20 seconds. They just inserted Jason Momoa. <laughs> oh, look, I gotta pull it back. That's amazing. Uh, God, I love this franchise. Building this magnificent family. What's going on in that head of yours? Something little piece of it. He said, Dad, they're not afraid of anything. But I am. I'm afraid of losing someone I love. Dominic Toretto, you're about to learn all about fear. Boom! You built such a beautiful life, filled with love and family. I never got that chance. You stole that from me. My future. My family. And now... I'm gonna break yours. Piece by piece. He's coming for you with everything. What's the plan, Dom? I'm not sure anymore. One of us might not come back. 
come back from this. But we have to fight. Never accept death when suffering is owed. All the dangerous. Ain't too many get bang with us. Label us no us. It's a setup. He's trying to tear us apart. Our situation is fight one. What's we gonna do? Fight or run? Winning used to be about winning. We raced for respect. Today, I raced to stop the bloodbath. That's the problem with having such a big family. How do you choose the ones you save? Let's race! You still know how to drive? What do you think? It's showtime! Here we go! Game recognizes game. I'm coming for you, son. Here they come. You will never be able to break my family. You gotta be kidding me. I read of her fake dreads, right? Uh, that's that's thankful. Yeah. Um, you know the rock gonna <sighs> pop up in there. Oh my god. He has to. If everyone pops up but him, no, he's gonna. Pop I mean, up this is a two parter for one, so this ain't end of it. So right. there's gotta be. Yeah, by the end, he gotta be. I know his hate is strong. You do know. Listen, I just was. One. What did you say, Gore? This is not the last one. This is definitely not the last one. But they're going to do spinoffs. Yeah. But yeah. no, this is 10, dog. Isn't you this can't... the longest run as franchise in history? Yet? Yes. Yes. They've already done that. They've already broken. You know, they already Kareem Abdul Jabbar. You know, they LeBron did <laughs> already. So it's like. LeBron. <laughs> yeah, so they, you know, they're good. But oh my God, that looks amazing. <laughs> it's like what else can you say about the fast and furious like what else can be done I, I, every time i think they've done everything you know they've done it all they surprised me you uh, know i just i just know that vin diesel for real is a crazy person because when i was walking around the universal lot there's a gentleman who was i love these stories wait, wait, wait. Yeah. When I was walking around the you Universal, the universal lot, lot. You know, yeah. story. Oh, yeah. Listen, I'm not trying to stun on y'all, but listen. But you are. But you I saw are. A bold, <laughs> but I saw you a bald are. man with a Fast 9 jacket on, just like hanging out. And I was like, there's no way that's Vin Diesel wearing a Fast 9 jacket yes, on is. a Universal lot. And then I walked by and he's like, you know, I was talking to you know, Lewis. The other. I was like, why is Vin Diesel wearing a Fast 9 jacket on the Universal lot? People know who you are. You had the highest grossing franchise in the studio. That's crazy. Oh. This is a crazy man. He loves the franchise. That's family. That's why. <laughs> but I like no, really, I like how all your stories start that way. While I was working on the Universal lot, Barack Obama walked out of Studio <laughs> Two, and it's just like okay. He's like, I love the, uh, I love the show, Drunk Back History. You know, right? Fantastic. I love the show. And he said to me, <laughs> "You and Baker Bone, y'all got it, <laughs> sir, Mr. Obama. You want to do the show?" He's right. like, "Absolutely not." <laughs> And then a pack of doves lifted him up in the air and he flew away. Like, it's like, okay. Who <laughs> is his arms out like Jesus? <laughs> the reason I pay my taxes. <laughs> hey, worth it. <laughs> oh my goodness. Well ben, worth it. Ben, are uh, all the trailers? I think that is. Um, I did have another quick bit of news related to uh, the... Um, Fast Five, it seems that Vin Diesel is coming back for a fourth Pitch Black film. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I heard about that. Yep. 
I didn't really care. Well, yeah, More not a lot of hype you. there. Yeah, real, <laughs> real quiet on that one. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, wow. I like the Vin Diesel Bob. Like, I just don't really care about that story. So he, he got those goofy gl- goggles. We're good. <laughs> He's good. Um, I, I think the final thing. Have you guys been watching The Last of Us? Yes. Of course. Mm. Yes. Okay. Uh, did you, have you played the games? Yeah, I uh, haven't played the game. I haven't played the second one. I played the first one. Okay, and are you up to date? Are you have you watched the last episode that happened on Friday? Yes, I any am. any thoughts about that last episode? How you feel? I'm man, this show oh. it keeps twisting the knife. That's all I'll say. Like you think it's gonna be like I tell my wife, I'm like this is gonna be a sad episode because I know where the story, and then it's even more depressing. <laughs> You're mm-hmm. Like like to be fair, the creators did say after uh, episode three, they're like. Why is everyone sad? That was the happy episode. And they have proven themselves correct because this is a whew, this is a dreary world. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, episode three surprised the hell out of me because I did not mm-hmm. see it going that route. And it really gave me a story that I wasn't expecting to be there. <laughs> like, yeah. Uh, um, what's, the, what's the actor's name? Uh, I came from. Oh, from Parks and Rec. Uh, yeah. Nick Offerman. Offerman, yeah, Nick, yeah, Nick Offerman uh, did an amazing job, and just that whole episode, just man, makes me want to have a life partner. Now I want to propose to somebody. <laughs> no, it was it was beautiful, and like, yeah, it we was. were we. This yeah. last episode was very emotional damage for us. Like, it's it's on some other things. I know Ben and me is like even questioning if he wants to continue on now. <laughs> yeah, if it, it's not for our podcast, I, I'd be good. Yeah, I I thought. Because I thought it wasn't even well done, emotional damage. I thought that episode was just like, you know, okay, you know, it's like I, we, we I elaborated more on the show, but I think The Last of Us is very well done zombie drama, but I've seen a lot of very well done zombie drama in my life, and I have issues with the genre at whole, and I don't think they, I thought episode three addressed a lot of those issues, and then I thought episode five would double down on them damn issues, <laughs> like... <laughs> Yikes! We did let's not make, know. Yeah, yeah, let's make sure yeah. you know you, you. We hit all the marks about why zombie drama is problematic. You know, right? And that was it. But for everybody listening, yes, we do uh, review The Last of Us. So every week it drops like right after the show is over. So just make sure that you are locked to four owners on your favorite podcast platform. Brandon and Gordon, we had a really good time with you. But before we go, we have to do our famous brap segment with you. We haven't done this in a long time, Ben. I mean, we haven't. Long time. You know, we've just been churning out show at the show, but we have not done this. So this is our quick fire or rapid fire question and answer segment. We're going to give you two or three choices to choose from. You tell us what you prefer. And if you would like to elaborate, you can. But are you two ready? Yes. It's me. All right, Ben. I mean, take it away. All right. The Falcon or War Machine? War Machine. Falcon. The Wire or Breaking Bad? Wire. The Wire. Luke Cage or Black Panther? Black Panther. Black Panther. Did you say White Panther? <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh, that sounds terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't that just Tommy from the Power Rangers? Yes. <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> All right, okay. Pete. Um, Mike Myers, Freddy, or Jason? Jason. Mike Myers. <clears throat> All right, Mike. We got one Mike, one Jason. Okay, uh, Lex Luthor or Doctor Doom? Lex Luthor. Doctor Doom. Star Wars or Star Trek? Star Wars. Yeah, Star Wars. Fresh Prince or Martin? Martin. Fresh Prince. What? I love, I love the division. <laughs> yeah. What? Carlton, man, that was like that was the first time I saw I felt the scene on TV. Tommy. Oh shit. Tommy is fucking hysterical. Oh um, all right. Never. All right, but hold up. We got to go. Carlton, you, 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 re- I mean, I, I was in the a, suburbs. God damn, fam. He said Ann Arbor. A, I mean, I was a nerd, but, you know, I even I was like, ooh, Carlton, you out there, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I was not Will Smith. You know, I did not relate. But I that's who he related to. Why are you? <laughs> I know. I just like, damn, bro. Who you taking away my truth, Todd. Right. And, like, that's his truth. And, Why are Ann you? Ann Arbor was hard on you, fam. <laughs> See, that's, a, that's the problem dudes from the hood like you, you grew up in a what, what hood did you come from the third ward oh that's the reason why all right because like yeah no costumes around there people didn't identify with that like mm. <laughs> it was funny but all right what, what's your guys favorite superhero movie of all time Ooh, dark Knight. really yeah man yeah i got 
I got a joke on there. Yeah. Uh, uh, ooh, favorite superhero. Damn, that's too rough. Um, it's gonna sound real wild, but I, I really watch Deadpool almost like twice a week. Wow. Yeah. I, I, I enjoy right. the character. Uh, we'll have to get into that another time. Uh, <laughs> That is, you know, I, yeah, I, I had some more, but I think, you know, we got to wrap this up. And, uh, yeah, after that, the fact that you watch Deadpool twice a week is, you know, that's. He's a comedian, sir. He gets a lot of. I, I mean, yeah, but all right. Um, yeah, you know, before we do get you out of here, can you let the Internet know where they can find y'all at, you know, and give them the date of that show and everything else one last time? Yes. Brandon, you go first. Yeah, y'all can follow me at American Collins. Uh, you can the show uh, Drunk Black History is on Thursday, February twenty third. It's a show where Gordon and I host, and we bring on comedians, actors, uh, personalities, and they talk about a historical black figure or event that has not gotten their due. So that's on Thursday, February twenty third at the Bell House in Brooklyn. Please come through. Dr- uh, tickets are available at drunkblackhistory.com. We also have live stream tickets available for those of you that are not in the New York area. Please come and fuck with us. It's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to laugh. We're going to drink. And we're- learn together gordon uh you can find me at baker bone on instagram and twitter uh bakerbone.com for all my shows and updates as brandon said february 23rd we'll be at the bell house doing drunk black history one of my favorite shows to do that teaches uh black history and Mm -hmm. lets you get to know tons of great personalities in the black community so definitely check it out awesome and thank you guys so much for joining. We appreciate you. Thank you so much for listening to Foral Nerds. Make sure you are locked in. As I said, the Foral Nerds are your favorite podcast platform. Also on the socials, on the interwebs, you can follow myself at Tatiana King and also this gentleman over here, DJ Ben Hamid. Anything else, Ben Hamid, before we go? No, make sure you check out our merch at ForAllNerds.com. You can get all this fly stuff like the stuff I'm wearing right here, the T'Challa and Friends uh, design. Plus, we got some other new joints coming very soon. And with that, we're going to get out of here before we all get, you know, uh, murdered and discombobulated by various people. <laughs> Peace. Yeah, yeah. Fan Pro